awesome tutor, and today we're talking about origins of life on Earth. Mainly fossils, though. Um, this is one of the topics in Unit 2 of Biology, GCSE, of course. Now, origins of life on Earth. First of all, let's talk about some, uh, what a fossil is. What is a fossil? They might ask you this question in your exam, and it's usually two marks. Well, a fossil is basically the remains of an organism. So, animal or plant, as long as it's an organism. That have been for, um, from how many years ago? Fossils are old. From millions of years ago. But that doesn't usually give the second mark. The second mark is that is is this. Fossils are found where? Where do you usually find the fossils? You find the fossils in rock. So found in rock or rocks. Remains of an organism, that's one of your marks. Found in rocks, that's usually your second mark. So remember, rocks, remains, that's what a fossil is. Now fossils can be formed in many different ways. But the most common way a fossil can be formed is when the parts of the animal or the plant are replaced by minerals. So whilst the animal and plant parts are decaying, so while they are decaying, they are replaced by minerals. And of course then they'll be formed in the rocks. So let's look at an example. Here's a cliff, here is one layer of rock, another, and another. Let's call this layer of rock A, this one B, this one C. Which one do you think is the oldest rock? A, B, or C? I'm pretty sure it's C. Why is the oldest? Because it's the lowest. Why? When fossils form, obviously they form in rocks. And when that rock has been formed over millions of years ago, after another couple of years, a new layer will be formed, and then a layer on top of that, and a layer on top of that, and a layer on top of that. So the one at the bottom is the oldest one. They usually give you questions like this on your exam. Now let us wipe this clean. Okay, so now we are back. What do fossils actually do? Why are they so useful to us? Of, um, fossils are an important piece of evidence and they give us a lot of information but information about what? Evidence for what? A lot of information of how life developed on earth. Now they usually give you a question in your exam about along the lines of this. Why is it difficult for scientists to know exactly what are the origins of life on Earth? So, why is it difficult to know the exact origins of life? Well, the answer is very simple. The answer is, there just isn't enough valid evidence. Fossils, there are a good piece of evidence, but they're just not enough. So, not enough valid evidence. Now, let us move on. Just rub this out. Okay. So, I told you a common way that fossils can be formed, replaced by minerals. But there's another way that's very rare, and this happens when 
the parts of the organism do not decay. So they do not decay. Why do they not decay? Well, first of all, what do you need for decay to occur? You need oxygen. You need microorganisms. Actually, the main one is microorganisms, but obviously most microorganisms need oxygen to survive, as well as relatively good or optimum temperatures. So about like 37 degrees Celsius, which is the human body temperature, you know, high 20s and 30s. Optimum temperature. So for the fossils not to decay, then that would mean we would not have microorganisms. Maybe because there's no oxygen, or maybe because the temperature is not good enough. An example of this is ice fossils. Now you can, you know, it's self-explanatory. The temperature of ice fossils, it's like in, say, the Arctic or Antarctica. The temperatures are too cold. For the microorganisms to survive. So the microorganisms, they die, and without microorganisms, decay cannot occur. And that's why they do not decay. So two cold microorganisms cannot survive for decay. Now we will move on. Okay, now we're going to be talking about extinction. Extinction, the definition, is the permanent loss of all members of one species. For example, let's say the blue whale. Blue whale is endangered now, but if it is to be extinct, then that means there are no more blue whales at all. Permanent loss. Why permanent? Because once they're gone, there's no more to reproduce. So they're gone forever, all members of one species. Now extinction can be caused by several different things. One of those things is disease. Say a massive disease breaks out, a massive epidemic or pandemic, but for animals, that is that is so deadly, it kills the entire species. Also, we've got predators. Over hunting, such as, say you've got a fox and a rabbit. Say the foxes, they begin over hunting the rabbits and they overhunt them so much that all the rabbits are just extinct. They've killed them all. Predators. What else? Competitors. What, what do we mean by competitors? Well, is the fox the only thing that wants to eat the rabbit? No, what about perhaps the wolf? What if the wolf is a better and say new competitor to the fox and it eats it basically takes all the resources. It has control of all, all the resources needed to survive. And so the foxes have no chance and they become extinct. And another more common one is environmental or climate. Say the weather gets really, really bad, like massive floods, massive storms, blah, 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 and they're so bad, they kill an entire species. That's how bad they are, and that's one of the causes of extinction. Now, mass extinction is basically extinction on a global scale, or a big, big, big scale. One of the examples of this is dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, they, we believe they experienced a mass extinction event. So... Extinction on global scale. 
And one of the causes of mass extinction, it could be really, 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 really bad weather, or it could be, say this is Earth, and you've got a giant asteroid coming towards it. It hits Earth, the impact is so big it kills everything on it. That would be a mass extinction event. Another thing, say you've got tons of volcanoes, and suddenly there's a massive eruption. Pff, lava, pyroclastic flows. The mass eruption is so deadly it kills all the animals or organisms on Earth. That will be a mass extinction event. And now I will move on to the next part of this topic. Okay, now we're going to be talking about speciation. Speciation is defined as the formation of new species. Not going to be hard to remember. Speciation, formation of new species. Now the thing you need to really know is how these new species have been formed. In your specification, you need to know that. So first what happens is say you have a population of birds of the same species. Hmm? And suddenly this population becomes isolated. Hmm? The key word is isolated. Isolated or separated. Either by geographical events such as formation of islands or one of the populations migrates to a new environment. And if it is a geographical event, then if such as such the formation of islands, then again, they will also have separate environments. So the one that migrated <clears throat> will have a new environment and therefore different conditions. And because of these different conditions, this population will evolve differently from that one. In theory. And so they evolve differently. How? By a process of natural selection. You should know what natural selection is. I'm going to give you a basic overview, overview right now. <clears throat> Say you have uh, a mutation. A random mutation, a random new gene that's been added to the genome. And this animal has this new gene, this new mutation. If it is advantageous and makes it easier for the animal to survive, then it's going to be able to reproduce more and pass on that successful gene. And therefore the, that population will increase in numbers while the ones with the disadvantageous genes, the ones that don't help them survive, or don't help them survive as much, will either die out due to the disadvantageous gene, or because of the new competition of the population with the new gene. I know that sounds complicated, but you should already know what natural selection is. And so, by a process of natural selection, the new gene is passed down. And this new gene passed down is what makes the two populations, the one that stayed and the one that migrated, evolve differently. And therefore, because they've evolved differently, there is now genetic variation between the two populations. Genetic variation, they have different genes. They are genetically different. And if, they're gen and if they're so genetically different, if they have evolved differently by so much, then they cannot successfully interbreed. So, i.e., they cannot successfully have sex and produce offspring. If this population has become so genetically different from this one, if they cannot interbreed successfully, then that means, by definition, they are different species.
And that's really all you need to know about speciation. And now I'm going to go to the exam question. Okay, so this is a standard six marker. Suggest an explanation of the development of different species. They usually will give this to you maybe in a case study, and so there's going to be some differences in the answer, but it's really just a generic answer. So first of all, for a speciation to take place, the species, so two populations, are isolated or separated. So they might give you two populations in your case study, and you're going to see that they were isolated or separated. They usually tell you how, in migration. Anyway, isolated or separated. And because they're now isolated and separated, there are now new or different environment or conditions. Because now that one of the species has been separated, one of them has a new environment or new conditions. And by a process of natural selection, as I explained before, they will have evolved differently. So by a process of natural selection, they will have evolved differently, passing down the new gene they got or the new mutation. So then, passing down the new gene or mutation. And they have evolved differently. So now, between the two populations, there is genetic... Variation. Variation there in their actual genes of what they are. And variation that's so big that they cannot successfully interbreed. And because they cannot successfully interbreed, they are therefore, by definition, different species. And that's your standard six marker on explanation of development of new species and speciation. This might come up in your next exam because it has not really occurred in your in 2015 paper or 2014 or 2013. So it might be a high likelihood of this coming up. But then again, they might, they might give you a more important six marker on the more important and complicated topics. This topic is just easy. No, not easy, but I'm talking too much now. Bye.